Hey guys, this is Shayan, and in this video, we're gonna solve a 2000 plus DP problem 360B, Lefko, and Array. Let's start. Let's go. This problem states that assume that you have an array of size at most 2000, A1, A2 to AN, and we define the beauty of an array C of A as the maximum value of A of I plus 1 minus AI, the absolute value of the difference. And we want to change at most k elements of this array such that we can minimize the value of c of a. The less the value of c of a is, the more beautiful the array is. Okay, so basically when we see this problem, there are some things that comes to our mind. First, this n at most 2000 grabs our attention. It tells us that the solution should be n squared polylog. I mean, it is either n squared or n squared log. So you need to find that out. The second thing is that we can change at most k elements and we want to minimize the value of c of a. This gives us some feeling of using binary search. Well, because we can see that if we want to change at most k elements, can we make the value of c of a at most some value x or not. If we can solve this problem, even if O of n squared, then the main problem is also solve you in O of n squared log n. So this is the main question that we have now. If we do a binary search, we want to find out if we can make C of A less than or equal to some fixed value x. Okay, so now that the value of x is fixed, we can say a few things. Well, first of all, we know that we want to make our answer at most x and we want to find out what is the minimum possible number of operations to make this possible. So we want to make C of A less than or equal to x. We want to see that what is the minimum number of operations required to do that. And if that value was less than or equal to k, then it is possible to reach x. And if it was more than k, then it is not possible to reach x. So we want to find out what is the minimum number of elements that we need to change. So basically it's like we changed the problem. Initially we wanted to find out using at most k elements, what is the minimum possible value of c of a. So k was fixed and x was not. Now we fixed x and we want to find out that for this fixed x, what is the minimum number of k required. So we want to minimize the number of elements that we change. It means that we want to maximize the number of elements that we do not change. I show them with this blue color. So in this situation, we need to find out what is the relationship between these two consecutive elements that they can stay the same. What is the condition for them? You know, I mean that when I can have both elements i and j stay the same as they were, when I can do that, if I want to maintain this value of C of A to be less than or equal to X. Here is the place that I need to think. I say that when I have this I and this J, when I start from I and go towards J, each time my value can be increased or decreased by X. So now assume that I and J are fixed, these elements will not change, and in the middle of them, all the elements will change. I mean, I'm free to change all of them. So these are two consecutive elements that will not change. Now, in this period in the middle of them, I know that each time my value can be increased by X or decreased by X. So what I can say about A of J minus A of I is that this value can be at most the difference between i and j times x. Because each time I can derivate from the previous elements by at most x. So each time I can add x or subtract x. And I start from i and I go towards j. So their difference cannot be more than this value. If it is, then it is not possible at all. But if for all of these i and j's, uh, this is the case, a of i, uh, the absolute difference between a of i and a and j is less than or equal to this value, then we can say that we can always fill this gap. Because, for example, assume that a of j is greater than a of i. So in here, a of j 
is going to be greater than a of i i can just say that each time i increase the value of i by x as i go towards j until i reach the value of a of j then i won't increase my number so each number will be the previous number plus x minimum a of j so it's going to be minimum of a of j and for example if this element is s a of s minus one or it's better if i call it a prime of s minus one because these are the values that we made now plus x if i do this then easily i can fill this gap so that's a necessary and sufficient condition if this does not happen then it's not possible at all and if this happens it is possible to do that so i should make sure that for each two consecutive elements that i keep them and i won't change them i have this condition so now knowing this condition i know the structure i know that how the values that i choose have to be so i can say that i can have a dp in here such that dp of i means that what is the maximum number of elements that i can keep them unchanged so what is the maximum number of elements which can remain unchanged if i want to calculate this dp first i can say that dp of i firstly i set it to be equal to one because in the worst case scenario it can stay the same and all the other elements can change they can all become equal to ai and then i can have another iteration on all the previous elements like j and i say that if a of i the absolute value of a of i minus a of j was less than or equal to i minus j a i minus a j times x then it means that i can update i from j so i can say that dp of i is equal to maximum of dp of i and dp of j plus one so this way I can find out all the values of dps and my answer if I define my answer as the maximum number of elements which can remain unchanged my answer can be maximum of all the dps so because I'm just fixing that which element is going to be the last element that I keep that unchanged and then I can consider its dp and just find the maximum among all the values of dps and then I need to check that if n minus ans because ans is the maximum number of elements which do not change so n minus ans is gonna be the minimum number of elements which needs to change so this value should be less than or equal to k I just need to check this and then if this happens i say that this is possible otherwise it is not possible so i can have two values of low and high and i define them in a way that low is always something that i know it's not possible and high is something that i know that it is possible okay so i can say that my low can be minus one because i cannot set it zero because maybe zero is possible maybe all the elements are equal so i want to define low in a way that i'm sure that it is not possible and i can set high to be inf and inf can be two times ten to the power of nine because numbers are at the absolute value of numbers is at most ten to the power of nine so this way if i set high equal to two times ten to the power of nine i'm sure that this is possible and then i can have a while and I can say that while high minus low was greater than one, I can just set mid equal to low plus high divided by two. And then after that, I can just check this value of mid. If it was possible, I just say if check of mid, then it is possible indeed. So I just need to say high is equal to mid because the definition of high was that it is a value that is possible high is equal to mid else low is equal to mid and at the end i can just say that my answer is going to be high so i just need to see out high because as i defined it high is an element that is possible and low is not possible when the difference between high and low becomes one it means that we find that border 
Low is the last number that is not possible and high is the first number that is possible. So high is going to be our answer. Okay, so that's it with the explanation. Let's get into implementation. I can just say that first I need to define my arrays n is at most 2000 and my inf can be 2 in 9 plus 2 in and then int of n and a of n and the value of k these values are given and i should just say scene n and k for int i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus scene a i okay so this is all with the inputs i got the inputs so now i want to find the answer i just start by defining my values of low and high and as i said i just set them like this and I say that while high minus low was greater than one, I say int of mid equal to low plus high divided by two. And then I should check if mid is okay or not. I should use my DP. For example, I can process that in a function like what I explained to you in tablets. As you can see in here, I had a function check that I was seeing that if mid is possible or not. So I just have an inline bool of check. This inline is nothing. I mean, if it is not here, it makes no change. It just speeds things up. It speeds the calling function process and it gets some value like X, as I said, and it checks if it's possible to make C of A at most X. So I should first initialize my values of DP. So I should say fill DP, DP plus N zero. Initialize fill all of them with zero. I could also fill them with a one, but there's no difference. I can just say that in DP of I equal to one and then for int of J equal to zero, J less than I, J plus plus. And I say that if the absolute difference of AI and AJ was at most X times i minus j if this happens then i can say that dp of i is equal to maximum of dp of i and dp of j plus one and things can get a bit tricky in here because these values are a bit large and it is possible that we have overflow in these steps so we need to make sure that we do not overflow and in order to do that i just here define int landmark this is not the best thing to do in contests i usually use that because sometimes you just need everything implemented in a very fast way so you just define it long and then you don't care about uh, is it int or is it long like everything is going to be long -like. but in general it's not best practice because it makes your code slower so if we want to do this better, we should not uh, say define int long in here. And if you do that, because main function should be an int, you should say int 32 underline t. And you should also have some value ans, which is initially zero. And then in here, we have to say that ans is equal to maximum of ans and dp of i. And at the end, I can just return n minus ans less than or equal to k. If n minus n was less than or equal to k, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. And it says that it is not possible to do this, make this x with at most k operations. So in here, I can just simply say that if check of mid, high is equal to mid, else low is equal to mid. And as I said, I can just say c out high backslash. So hopefully, this is all about the code. I hope that it also works well. Guys, in between of the video, I want to say a small thing to you. I'm making this video in order to help everybody who are learning CP. I want them to learn it for free and I want this to be accessible to everyone. So if you know anyone who might get benefit from these videos, please share these videos with them. This way I can be sure that all my efforts are not for nothing and many people are getting benefits from the videos I make. And this really motivates me to continue what I'm doing. Okay, so let's test the inputs. The sample inputs, I just run this. The first one is zero and it is supposed to be zero, it's correct. The next one is a hundred and it is supposed to be a hundred. And the next one is one and it is supposed to be. So I just submit it. And I hope that it's If we don't get a wrong answer in the long run, I think something is going to be fine. Okay, 
Sweet out here. Uh, 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 uh